Hello and welcome to a brand new year of rugby on Borders Rugby Television. And to begin 2022, it's the only senior club game played in Scotland today due to a mix of Covid concerns and the weather. But this premiership match between Glasgow Hawks and Hoyk has been switched to the 3G pitch at Loch Inch. And before we join Dale Clancy and Robin Purdy in the commentary box, we hear from the coaching staff from both teams good to get obviously out and get the boys uh, back playing it's been a while since we played we missed in the last game v Mosobra so it's good to get out this is where we train on a Tuesday Thursday and the boys are kind of eager to get out and play on a kind of hard surface rather than from the wet conditions we've played in the last few while so hopefully the sun stays dry and we get to see some running rugby from both teams today it's uh, just great to get games on and um, you know obviously I think just with Covid and thing it could potentially come back to haunt teams at the end of the season so fantastic to get the game on and just get everybody back playing because uh, the lads have been chomping at the bit to get back playing and you know, get back to rugby, just get blow away the cobwebs after the new year. Obviously some changes, uh, I think from the last time, I think Liam Brim's played at 15 and then he's moved over to 10 today uh, after returning from injury, so a few changes there, but you know, the guys, we think we feel as if we've got that depth now that doesn't really matter who plays, uh, we've got the strength and depth where guys are playing well in the twos, they're due the opportunity, that's why they came in. So they just need to take those opportunities when injuries and things like that arise. A few changes since the last game. I think we've brought in Sean Muir, uh, Andrew Mitchell, and we've also brought in Ross Graham as well since the last time of that. But we've all together had a strong team, and I think collectively as a squad we've, we've improved since that first game. So fingers crossed. I think the guys just love playing, being able to play rugby. You know, it's, it's always difficult when you're, you're you're at parts where it's been a downpour and it's a heavier pitch. You know, it's hard to get through the ball about and get tempo and get on the front foot. This will hopefully bring that for for both teams. I'm sure Hoyk are here to play good rugby as well with the way that Matty's got them playing. So it's ideal for both teams. I think we played uh, GHA earlier in the season at the Volunteer Park in the 3G, and it did tend to suit us. So. We did, we discussed it and we thought, no, look, if it's going to get the game on, let's just, any surface will do. We'll happily play on Hoyk half if we had to the day just to get a game. Happy New Year to everyone from Borders Rugby TV. And now that the cheers and beers from the start of 2022 are behind us, we can start to focus on the business end of the season in national action. But games are slightly few and far between this weekend due to COVID, but we do have a fixture and it's in the Premiership and we've ventured through to Glasgow for a rugby fix where fifth place Glasgow Hawks will be looking to close the gap on Hoyk in third. The game has been switched to the fantastic 3G facility at Lock Inch, which should in itself have a part to play in this encounter. Hawks were narrowly defeated at Mansfield Park in October as they lost 14 points to 10, with the try by captain Matty Carrier proving vital on that occasion as he just welcomes his team onto the field. The home side today come into this game with a massively changed squad with only eight members surviving from that visit. Brendan McGrory is back in the squad at outside centre and Jack McLean has recovered from a head knock to slot in at the second row. Hoyk will be looking to build on an impressive performance at Mileni Park, albeit a defeat, and they will not want to show any signs of a New Year hangover. Morgan Tate, who's been in good try scoring form, is missing from the matchday squad, along with the Edinburgh Rugby Academy members Dan Gamble, Ben Evans and Rudy Brown, but they can still call upon the experience from Super 6 from the likes of Andrew Mitchell and Ross Graham, who are starting at outside centre and in the back row, respectively. And a win for Hoyk here will almost secure their place in the top four, but Hawks, who are chasing down in brackies in fourth place, will be looking to do everything they can to make home advantage count. As Hoyk's captain, Matty Carrier, is just getting the last few words into his team here. Just having a, a little chat there with Rudy McLeod. And it looks like it is going to be the fly half for Glasgow Hawks' Liam Brins to get play underway here in what is a, a very scarce rugby fixture at the start of 2022. And play is underway in this relatively dry facility so far and it's well plucked out there by Rory Smith who's just clutched that and set that back for Declan Lightfoot who's got Sean Muir on the side of the ruck just trying to get his muscle into the game early on and Declan Lightfoot now slowing play down and finding Kirk Ford back in his own 22 he's going to kick it downfield and find a little bit of uh, open field there as I think that's Pinkerton who's been uh, well back there no it was, uh, it was actually Lewis McNamara the big number 8 for Glasgow Hawks who's back scooping up that ball and there's been a knock-on there in proceedings, so there's going to be a, a scrum down, and it's going to be a put into the scrum for Hoyt here. This is a, a good position in the field for Hoyt to attack from Declan Lightfoot, who's going to roll the ball into the scrum, has got options out in the back, so it's going to be really interesting, the battle between McGrory and Mitchell at 13. But certainly in the front row, it looks like Hawks have got the upper hand there. They certainly had the authority in the scrum. They've won the penalty from that set piece and that might be a sign of things to come and it almost is perhaps a little sign of the loss of the likes of Dan Gamble in the front row Robin Yes it looked like that was a, a fairly solid scrum but from Hoyt to start with but then Hawks just got the nudge on there and it's culminated in the first penalty of the game and 
I think the wind's into their face here, so Brims will be looking to put this down the touchline early on. That's going to be an interesting battle in the forwards because Hoyk do have a, a relatively strong set piece, but they were made to look relatively amateur there. The, the front row specifically as well, Sean Muir, Matty Carey and Rudy McLeod, who's had a good season for the Green Machine. They're a very good front row, but they were made to look pretty amateur there by uh, Downer, Cairncross and Gary Strain in the front row for Hawks. There's going to be Cairncross to throw in to the line out, and it's a scrum half, a little nip here, a little break, and he's making some good yards here. And it is Matthew Donaldson who's made some good inroads to the, the Hoyk 22, and he's been met well by Andrew Mitchell who wraps him up. But this is uh, dangerous territory for Hoyk to be in. From the uh, putting to their own scrum, they're now defending their own try line. And it is Michael Downer just picking up and going round the side of the ruck there and looking to try and make the small yards. And it is his prop partner, Gary Strain, who now, as the, as the rain starts battering down here on this 3G park, and now Halafihi has looked to try and introduce himself to this uh, Hoyk defensive line. But Glasgow Hawks doing well, keeping this ball alive and looking to try and keep play going. A little hand in at the ruck there from Graham. But the referee has let that go. There's been a knock on as well, so the advantage is with Glasgow Hawks on this occasion. Now Brim's looking to go back inside. He looks to try and get the offload. He's found a runner there, and I think he's found Lewis Stewart. And it's a good play there from the Glasgow Hawks back row. Now Dawson, he does find the number eight there, McNamara. He's got six tries so far this season. Can he add another one? And Hawks look to try and go to the touchline. It's been well defended there by Sean Muir, who's found himself in slightly alien territory for a prop, but he's done well to bring a player down to ground. And the rain is still battering down. It was sunny a minute ago, but Glasgow Hawks look to try and encroach on that line. Don't manage to push over on this occasion. And they look to set it up again, and it looks like it could be Gary Strain, who's just picked up the ball. He's retrieved it from his scrum half. He is nudged over by the looks of thing. I think it was Gary Strain was the player to, to get the ball down. But it's first blood to Glasgow Hawks. And they have come out with a lot of intent. And I was ex explaining before the game, Hoyt didn't want to show any signs of a hangover. But it certainly showed there. Glasgow Hawks coming out with all signs of intent. They have certainly started with a lot of intent, Dale. And they went through numerous phases. And Gary Strain, he's an experienced campaigner. And it all kind of started with a great break by the live wire scrum half Matthew Donaldson and that'll be his conference up for the rest of this game no doubt and it's challenging conditions as you can see the rain just going from left to right here and the right foot kicker it looks like it's good from here and as I can just three, see through the uh, the watery gl glass right in front of me it is successful it's the 8th of January, it is wintry conditions here, it's it's not too cold but it is, uh, it's just turned really really wet all of a sudden and that's going to have an impact on this game, albeit we're on a 3G pitch, but the, the wet and the, the, the weather and the wind is going to have a huge impact on this game, especially when it comes in to, uh, throwing into the line out obviously it's not the weather for a scrum half, he'll not be enjoying this, but he's uh, got a job to do here and the front row doing well to just keep that scrum nice and solid and Stuart Graham at the back of the scrum just issuing that up for Declan Lightfoot Ford now Ford has hit red path out the back he's trying to find a little space inside McGrory but it's not there on that occasion he's been wrapped up well by the outside centre who's returning to the squad this afternoon from their previous game and now Hoyk looking to try and keep it tight the cavalry do arrive and Lightfoot is there he's found Ross Graham and he looks to just barge his way through Brims and Halafihi but he's uh, been brought down by both of them Halafihi just finding himself on the wrong side of the ruck there and I think the referee noticing that as well 13 tries between them between Carrier and Muir and they, they hit Fairbairn in the line out and trying to set this up they've already dislodged a few of the Glasgow Hawks uh, defenders who are hopefully going to be digging in their heels to try and thwart any attack here but it's back in the hands of Stuart Graham that looks like it's over the line and it's a try for Hoyk and it is Stuart Graham who gets the try for the Mansfield Park men and they eat into this lead seven points to five and second time they make it count from the line out composed effort from Hoyk the forwards got in tight it was a tidy line out and there was only ever going to be one outcome uh, when it got to the back when Graham got his hands on the ball and he crashed over Kirk Ford into the the sleet and the rain here in Glasgow he's got a, a very challenging kick from a five metres from the touch line on the 22 metre line almost a right footed kick it looks like it's got the legs and it's an excellent kick from the fly half he adds to his tally of 92 points and gets the conversion and what an excellent game this is turning out to be so far it's uh, Lightfoot now who's found Muir round the fringes tries to punch up onto the 10 metre line but he's been met well by some Hawks defence I think they'll be aware of the dangers that Sean Muir poses 
and Kirk Ford now trying to find a little bit of space doing really well to just kick that downfield into McNamara's hands he does well to, to evade that as well and Hawks now looking to try and go from deep it's Matthew Stewart who's looking to try and go the brother of uh, Lewis Stewart who's playing in the back row this afternoon and both doing well to try and include themselves in this game but it's came back on a hoik side so it's maybe a slight misjudgment there from the Glasgow Hawks fullback as Declan Lightfoot looks to try and get players round the fringes and Hoyk now looking to try and really insert themselves in this game and stamp some authority but Hawks steal the ball and the props linking up well Brims has now got the ball over into that far side and now it's Goss and he's looking to try and stretch his legs gets over the 10 metre line and the support is there very very quickly for Glasgow Hawks linking up well and Brims looking to try and tweak himself into a, a very acute position there in the defence looking to try and release himself not able to on this occasion but the referee issuing a penalty and Donaldson going quickly he's a, a bit of a live wire as a, a scrum half he likes to play the game at a high tempo even if it is a torrential rain here in Glasgow and good play there from the McGrory has uh, been found well there by Strain the try scorer for Glasgow Hawks the props, certainly for Glasgow Hawks, have been getting about the field really, really well this afternoon. Donaldson now at scrum half finds Brims. Brims finds McNamara. And McNamara is looking to try and uh, evade the clutches of the Hoyt defence, but not able to. And Brims recycling himself well. He's got good support yet again from Glasgow Hawks. And Halafihi now is uh, up to the 22. He tries to put that big claw out and tries to uh, just bounce off the Hoyt defence but not able to on that occasion. And it's now Ghost. Ghost finds McGrorty. McGrorty looking to just try and go direct and straight through the heart of uh, the Hoyt defence. He makes really, really good territorial gains. And Donaldson slowing the play down. It was in the, did look like it was in the scrum half's hands but the referee on this occasion not agreeing. And Hawks looking to go quick yet again. And it looks like it's just opened up there. And it's the, the hooker, Paul Cairncross, the captain, who spotted the gap. And that was lacklustre there. It'll be interesting to see what had his hands the, the captain... Wasn't lifted. He's got to lift the ball before the player can come round. you know the rules? The ball wasn't lifted. Very well explained. I think it's, uh, it certainly put me right as well. I don't know the rules, so it's nice that the referee has asked the captain, Matty Carrier. David Sutherland has asked Matty Carrier if he knows the rules. I was always taught there were laws. David Changling taught me there were laws, so um, that's uh, slightly different. But it's, you know, it just opened up. That's very poor defensively from Hoyk there. I wonder if Hawks will be looking to try and thwart this line out. As Carrier hits Fairbairn on this occasion, it's been brought down. It's well gathered there and it's uh, Rennick, Callum Rennick who's looking to try and twist and weave themselves out of danger they're doing really really well there and it's now Sean Muir who's just round the corner and it's uh, Matt Carrier there well in support and Lightfoot he's found Ross Graham, Ross Graham looking to try and barge and pounce himself over that line but not able to but Lightfoot keeping play going pretty quick there and Mitchell finding his opposite man McGrorty in defence and Lightfoot again looking to try and keep the tempo up and it is Carrier again who's just been bundled over there's certainly a, a manual handling issue there we're trying to lift him back over the ruck but Lightfoot looking to try and keep the play going he's slowing it down slightly and he's found Ross Graham the next Watsonians hooker obviously equally as capable in the back row he's done well to get that ball secure there and coming back at the acute line that's Rory Smith who's uh, looking to try and get over that whitewash the ball's been girdled there by Declan Lightfoot uh, he's going to come back for a penalty I believe I think the referee again clear release clear release part of the tackle and Carrier again finding the tail it was uh, almost mid leap there Stuart Graham so there's maybe not a, a lot of inroads here but another penalty advantage coming for Hoyk and Matty Carrier is in his habitual position at the back of that mall it looks like it's got a bit of go, go forward the cavalry is arriving Matty Carrier pounces over the line and the referee saying there's no try there let's see what it's, it's intake here as the uh, outlook on this phase of play is oh. leg. fix it next one goes so he's uh, getting his views across but Carrier again thrown into the line out and it's Stuart Graham again who's uh, just plucking that ball from the sky and Matty Carrier just trying to claw himself get the ball off of Fairbairn who's uh, hooked it down just in front of him and Hoyt trying hard to dig their heels into this uh, 3G turf to get it going forward Carrier's got a bit of space on the left hand side if he's looking to offload that he's trying to get the ball high he's twisting turned it looks like he got the ball down from here the referee's saying that's held up and I think uh, the hooker, if I know him well enough, I think he'll feel very aggrieved that he wasn't able to get the ball down there. It'd be interesting to see that played back. It looked like he maybe had the momentum. 
He's not contesting that too much to the referee, so it's going to be a dropout. And there's another opportunity missed for Hoyk. They've been down here for the last five, six, seven minutes, and they've not been able to get any points. And they've had penalty after penalty, and they're still 14 points to seven down. And I think he's going to drop this set straight from the middle of the sticks there and it has found Callum Rennick he's a bit of a pocket rocket he'll be looking to try and go direct and go over his opposite man he, he's well fielded on that occasion it was a good defensive play there from Pinkerton and uh, the ball coming to McLeod who's uh, not been, been able to make much in the way of uh, inroads in terms of territory but Carrier finding themselves in centre field, centre field looking to try and uh, just get some momentum into this game because Hoyk look like they're, they're under a lot of pressure from this Hoyk, Hawks defence as you can see there is, it's a really good play from Cairn Cross putting a lot of pressure on Lightfoot and he's marched him back another 10-15 yards and Muir having to slow play down now he's found Graham and Hoyk on this occasion looking to just try and find the, the right answer to unlock this Hawks defence because as it stands they're 7 points down and they're really under a lot of pressure from Glasgow Hawks not able to really find the answer to, to break this defensive line is the it's the Gary Owen, the, the, the way forward. Good defence there from uh, Go, uh, Log, Logan Gordon Woolley. It's been very well fielded by Glasgow Hawks. It's plucked out of the sky there. And now Brims, who's found a little bit of uh, open field there. That's a weak defensive effort from Mitchell. And Brims is up to the halfway line. He's fended off an alley up to the 10 metre line. And it's a great exit strategy there from the fly half. Glasgow Hawks showing that they can throw it from deep. And there's a space over on that far side. It's a uh, pin the lugs back time for the prop. Big Fend throwing back in field. Is the bounce of the ball going to be kind? It was kind. It was Matthew Stewart who's got the ball, but he's been fielded in, uh, into touch. But Michael Downer showing that he's uh, got a little bit of use in Bolton on there. He uh, pinned the lugs back, just went down the touchline and almost look, looked like he had the, the better of um, Fairbairn there but on that occasion not able to, to go the distance Yeah Fairbairn's done really well there in, in fairness um, that's a real let off for Hoyk and you know they were the architects of their own downfall there it was some weak defence in the midfield and you know Br Brims is a good player you know he's been a good player for a while and you, you can't give him that sort of that sort of real estate into which to run it's very difficult to judge the wind when we're sitting here in this nice cosy box here. That's uh, I do feel for Stuart Cameron uh, out there in the camera because he, we are uh, well shielded in here at Lock Inch. But it's uh, certainly the wind has got something to play with this game, as does the rain. But Donaldson doing well to get there to the breakdown and Hawks looking to try and stretch this field. And that's a, a great run there from Hawks as they look to try and puncture this Hoyt defence. And again, there's a high tackle there from Connor Sutherland. So it is going to be a penalty to Glasgow Hawks. It is uh, Brims who's got the opportunity to try and stretch the lead here. That is successful. So it's another three points to add to the tally. 17 points to seven. And Glasgow Hawks currently lead. Before we came into this fixture, he was the third top point scorer in the Tenants Premiership. But Hawks have let that ball bounce from the restart. And looking to try and play their way out of danger. It's a big hit there on Ryan Fleet. And he's uh, just bounced back there. And Hawks now looking to try and go on the blind side. They bring Stewart into the game. And Donaldson now getting the boot to ball, putting it high. He's got a very good box kick and it's been guddled again by Graham. But Graham does find a bit of space on that far side. He goes in the inside of McLean and steps in field. So doing well to evade that defensive challenge there. And now Callum Rennick taking the ball forward. And issuing it to Lightfoot who finds Ford Ford finding Muir Muir acting as a dummy runner on this occasion just uh, pivoting but it's been ripped off of Mitchell by McGroarty has he still got youthful legs he looks like he's looking for support there he has got a supporting runner on that side it's Pinkerton who's going to try and evade the attention of Ford and that's an excellent challenge from the fly half Kurt Ford getting across the far end of the field and just bundling Pinkerton into touch, great defensive effort from the fly half, showing an abundance of speed, and that was very dangerous from an attacking position from Hoyk. Mitchell stripped by McGrory. McGrory doing the very sensible thing, shows his, his experience and offloading to a winger. But what a defensive effort there from Ford. That, that's right, Dale. The key word there is a winger. That would, you know, take a bow, Kirk Ford, son, because that was phenomenal cover defence on on a winger who you would have backed all day long to make his way in at the corner. 
it's always that when you're a winger, if you've got the, the try line beckoning, you can feel and you can hear somebody's feet just thumping towards you. Uh, I'll be wondering if they flex their muscles here as the ball's rolled in from Donaldson. It has held strong so far, but it's got that go forward now. As you can see Donaldson just pushing Lightfoot away. It's going ever so closely forward. It's Lightfoot who's dived on the ball. And the referee going to give the penalty. And I think uh, this, is a, this is an interesting option here because what, is, what would you do as a captain? Because you've got three points which are on a plate or you've got the upper hand in the scrum. Oh, that's a good question. F uh, five or six minutes from half time, bang in front, under the sticks, into the wind. I'm taking three here, Dale. Yeah, I'll take it three as well. That's what I'd be doing. Um, it's certainly, I think, points. You want to definitely come away with points here, and it's uh, an opportunity. But I don't see the forwards going too far from their positions, so I wonder if the uh, the captain, Paul Cairncross, is maybe signalling that it's it's going to be a scrum down. I think that's always the danger of having a captain in the scrum. They love, they love to flex their muscles up front. And that's exactly what they're going to do here. They've, they do have the addition of fresh legs with Ali Rogers, who's on the left-hand side of the scrum. But this is certainly going to be an interesting battle between these two packs. Just at approaching half-time, Donaldson with a put into the scrum. And again, it's held firm initially. You wonder if that nudge is going to come on from Hawks here. It's been picked up at the base. It's McNamara who's trying to twist and weave out of uh, pressure there from Lightfoot, doing really, really well, the young scrum half. But it's been past the strain. Strain has guddled that, and it's been knocked on by the looks of things there. It's going to be another scrum defensively there. But it was a, an opportunity for Glasgow Hawks to try and just camp themselves five metres from the line and try and put a bit of pressure on Hoyk, but an unforced error there from Gary Strain. That's right, and it's easy, I know it's easy for us to say up in the warmth of this very salubrious commentary box here uh, in <laughs> Glasgow, I have to say, but you've got to be taking your three points there, in my humble opinion. I think so. I think that's, uh, that could be something that comes back to haunt them, but we, we, this game has still got a lot in the legs in terms of longevity. We're not even at half-time yet. But we've had a lot of talking points so far. Hoyk not really at the races. They've been out-muscled and bullied for most of it. But the ball being put into the scrum. And now Stuart Graham trying to find some space there. Doing well to just bounce himself off the, the first challenge there from Stuart. And now Lightfoot, who's looking to try and evade himself from some trouble. He's uh, going very lateral. He's been met by Brims. Who, and now it's come to Donaldson, who's got a good boot. He's found some good space downfield. That is an excellent exit kick there. Albeit a, a bit innovative. And it's been returned back downfield. And it's Lightfoot under the ball. And he's got Kirk Ford back in field who's sizing up his options. He's got a very unorthodox kicking style, but Ford does well to just kick that turn the winger. And it is now Fleet. He's got some support there, but he's just going to put boot to ball again. And he's going to ask Donaldson to field this one. And that is uh, a guddle there. And the Hawks are quick, but it looks like it's been knocked on by Fleet as well. And, and that was very pedestrian from Donaldson at fullback. I think the, the ball potentially in this uh, swirling wind here, it's perhaps just moved in the air and caught Donaldson a bit unawares, knocked forward. Lightfoot rolling the ball back into the scrum of which we've had quite a few in this first half but it's a, another secure one and Hoyk looked like they're going forward yet again it's crumbled under the Hoyk pressure but Hoyk looked to try and play this ball a little wrap around from red path to Ford Ford finds Donaldson in some space he's evaded two or three challenges but Hawks doing well to swarm over that ball that has came back to Lightfoot he's found McLeod who is uh, Running at a race of knots, he got his uh, knees to the ground as well, so the referee just screaming at the Hawks players to release, but that ball was very fortunate for Sutherland, he scooped it up, but it looked like there was an overlap on that far side, Lightfoot has now found Graham, who's just stepped back in field off that left foot of his, he looks to try and just go direct, try and do it alone, and I think Hoyk on this occasion, in this fixture, they're going to have to do it collectively rather than individually, but Ross Graham are doing well again getting through a power of running but Ford Ford's got a little bit of space floats him all over to Gordon Woolley but it's just slipped through the clutches of the lightning winger they're starting to play a little bit more rugby hoik I think they're trying to get the ball through the hands but Hawks certainly look like they're equally as capable of doing it Hawks who are in fifth place they've, they've won six and lost six they've played 12 fixtures so it's been a bit of a stop start season for Glasgow Hawks but they're still in with a shout of make it, making the top four but they'll need to get out of their 22 and try and get down the tunnel at half time with this uh, healthy 17 points to 7 lead if they want to have any hope of uh, chasing down Edinburgh and also potentially Hoyk in the 3rd and 4th place positions and now Rogers is uh, going round the corner he's been met by 
the Hoyt captain Matty Carrier he just stopped him dead on the 22 but Donaldson has just picked the ball up from the ruck there kicked it into touch and the referee has blown half time here but we've still got 40 minutes of Premiership Rugby here on Borders Rugby TV and join us back for the second half where Hawks lead Hoyk 17 points to 7 Just about ready for the second half here at Loch Inch in Glasgow. And Matty Carrier has uh, certainly had a, a few words for his Hoyk team in the changing rooms because at the moment they're 17 points to 7 down against a, an inspired Glasgow Hawks team. Glasgow Hawks currently in fifth in the uh, Tenants Premiership. Hoyk in third, looking to try and consolidate their position in the top four and look to make sure that they can get themselves in that final playoff at the end of the season. So it's going to be a throw into the line out for Hoyk. And the line out did go well for Hoyk in the first half, but when they did have attacking platforms, they sometimes weren't able to make it count. And Matty Carrier's got another throw into the line out here. He's got some options. At the front, Sutherland, they've got Rory Smith, who's uh, just dancing his way to the middle, sets up that mall again and gives Carrier a, a chance to join his compatriots in the mall and he's now breaking away from them got round the corner and he's been met well there by uh, Lewis Stewart, the, the brother of Matthew the fullback, and Rory Smith now looking to try and go forward but Halafihi putting in a big challenge there it is Matthew Stewart, the brother, he's found McGroarty over on that far side, an excellent pass out the back door, but he's been well met in defence there by Andrew Mitchell who got across but what an excellent pass that was there from McGroarty and that was dangerous from Glasgow Hawks showing that they can strike at any given opportunity yeah, it was almost skin of the teeth uh, stuff there from Hoyk, and it was a, you know another excellent cover tackle this time from Andrew Mitchell and Hoyk just you know Hoyk need to compose themselves, feel their way into this second half, and build some platforms from which they can strike. Kieran Cross trying to just uh, scoop that ball out, but Ford looking to go through two defenders and offload, but the runners weren't there. It looks like he's going to come back on a Hoyk side. The advantage is there for Hoyk and Smith. If he can evade the clutches of Halafihi, he uh, certainly could offload this. There's numbers up on this side. It's been scooped well there from Graham, but Halafihi doing well to recycle himself. Great defensive tackle there from uh, Halafihi. But he's going to come back for the penalty. And I think Matty Carrier already pointing that he wants points as opposed to any sort of territory and going to the corner. The right footed kicker, he's got a very good connection. It sounded good when it left his boot, and it's uh, very good. It split the kindling. Another three points there, 17 points to 10 now, Hoyt Trail, but they're within that converted score. The captain, Matty Carrier, has been replaced by Corey Tate, another exciting talent. I wonder if, it's, if he'll go straight in the hooker, if there'll be a, a reshuffle with Ross Graham moving up to the front row. That will remain to be seen, but Matty Carrier is getting a little bit of time off the pitch. But it's Stuart Graham. He retrieves the ball from the restart again. Good work from the versatile back row. And now Sean Muir trying to get himself into this game. And he's just coughed it up in the challenge there. It's now an opportunity for Glasgow Hawks. Stewart getting the ball through the hands. Well, McGrory has got Fleet on this side. Fleet looking just to dance his way back in field. It was really the only way he could go. But he's been hauled down to ground there. And Hawks looking to try and reply straight away. And Cairn Cross, the captain, looking to try and go direct. And Glasgow Hawks looking to try and stretch their lead here it's been etched away by three points but they're looking to try and add to it here in Brims but dancing in field, he looks like he's got support there he's went back in field, they're over the line and Glasgow Hawks get the score they get the five points, great work from Brims to release Ali Rogers who is uh, the try scorer there I think the replacement who's came on in the front row it looks like he is the man who got the ball to ground and it's an instant reply from Glasgow Hawks a try from Ali Rogers a very accomplished kicker, right-footed kicker, ex Falkirk, fly half. And another right-footed kicker as well. And the assistant referees like that. And that's another conversion to add to his tally. And it's a, an interesting position for Hoyt to be in as light foot rolls the ball into the scrum. It's been well protected at the base there as the, the shunt comes on from Hawks. But it's been gathered by Graham. Graham looks like he maybe guddles that as he's been charged back. Looking at trying to secure his body position. But Halafi, he's got the ball and he's uh, got out of the danger area. Donaldson noticing there's perhaps going to be a bit of space downfield. And Bailey Ronald, uh, Kirk Ford doing well to gather that. Looking to throw a few dummies but he's uh, been met well by Glasgow Hawks defenders who had an opportunity to try and steal that ball from Hoyk 
but it came back on a Hoyk side penalty to Hoyk and just showing there the pressure and the I think the intent from Glasgow Hawks is probably the biggest thing that we've seen this afternoon from that scrum a put in it was secure at the tail the shunt comes on and an unforced error from Stuart Graham yeah, it was another error. It was in, an, in another attacking position for Hoyk, and you know they've, they've got the ball back here. Ford will be looking to put this back into territory, um, which he's done. And Hoyk again, they'll need to build from here, and they'll, they'll need to get something, and they'll need to get something quick. You feel? Yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. Um, I think they need to start turning this possession and territory into points. I say I think they do they, they do need to turn this into points because if they want to win this game of rugby they need the points on the board but it's came there and it's uh, Sean Muir who's recycled himself well round that line out and Declan Lightfoot has found again Halafihi just busting out the line and trying to put his shoulder into any part of somebody else's body and it's now came back blind and Callum Rennick looking to try and go direct and there's been a lot of that this afternoon for Hoyk a lot of players looking to go direct we're perhaps on the 3G pitch and again Halafihi is like a mole he's just popping up everywhere on this pitch he's going absolutely everywhere because at one minute he's centre field putting in a big hit he's now on the sideline here putting in a big hit and Hoyk cough up the ball it's drier now but we've not seen much of the likes of Mitchell and Logan Gordon Woolley McKean Donaldson, we've not seen them in this game. That's right. Hoyker are going to have to work it out because you know they, they do keep trucking it up manfully. But you've got that man Halfi again. He's, he's he's everywhere at the moment, and he has got no self regard for his own safety. <laughs> you have to say, and you know you'd follow him over the top. That's for sure. Yeah, defensively, he's uh, he's put a power of work this afternoon. But Redpath has found Mitchell. This is uh, more like what we're trying to find players linking up in midfield. And it's been a while, it's been about an hour before we've seen Mitchell and Redpath link up. But Ford has uh, found a space over on that far side. Sport. Ford looks to try and get the offload. It doesn't go to hand. It looks like it's been knocked on from a Hoyk hand as well. But Ford almost unlocked that Hawks defence. And perhaps it shows when you put a little couple of uh, smart moves together, the defence has to work hard to cover that field over on that far side. But Matthew Stewart doing well to clear his lines. It was almost kept in by Logan Gordon Willie, but it already travelled over the the touchline. Yeah, it was a it was a nice sort of half three quarter little break from Ford there, and he potentially is going to have to be the man that's going to unlock this Hawks defence. Uh, it reminds me almost of a young a, a young Rory Hutton uh, when he makes those breaks. He's he's got good game about. Him. Yeah, he's got that good glide, but again off the top, it's came back to a Glasgow Hawks hand, and uh, they've made great as McNamara, the try scorer, win this fixture on October the second at Mansfield Park. He was a try scorer for Glasgow Hawks. But he's made a, an, an abundance of yards there from the line out. A bit of miscommunication there. And a little bit of afters as well, just behind the tail of that ruck between uh, Callum Rennick. But there's uh, space over on this far side. The uh, Brims tries to cross the old kick. It's bounced up well there for McKean. McKean found Donaldson on this side. And Fleet, I think, on this 3G pitch is perhaps taking a sore one on his ankle. But Donaldson does well to clear his lines kick away from the danger but from a position where Hoyk were in between the 22 and the 10 metre line they're now having to clear their lines from the 22 and that is almost the story of this game and a little space over that blind side Lightfoot finding a little bit of room and he's been body checked there over on that far side by Pinkerton and I think he's uh, probably legally done that but he's been kicked over here and McKean now gets an opportunity to try and test Joy and uh, also Stewart was there in support and Hawks doing well to swarm over that on the deck and it is Ronan Joy who's got all over that the penalties went quick and it is Burgess who's looked to take that quick but the referee is going to bring that back and now Tom Hope with his first uh, real introduction to the game with ball in hand Ford now finding Rory Smith who again has got through a power of work in that middle row looking to try and insert himself on the game that looked like it could have been slightly forward there but it has found Sutherland the referee not picking that up and Lightfoot now looking to just go through the heart of the ruck there He's been defended well. And now Sean Muir just picking it up one-handed, scooping it up with his big ladle mitts. He gets the ball in hand. And now again, Hope, who's uh, tall for a, a front row, doing really well to again get the ball with a little bit of go forward. Now Corey Tate, he's been met well there, but the referee bringing that for an offside from Glasgow Hawks. And over that 10-metre line, Declan Lightfoot just casually getting the ball from the ruck Sean Muir pivoting there acting as 10 Corey Tate be met well there by Stewart there was Lewis Stewart there the back row and looking to try and keep Sean Muir up and looking to try and swarm over this uh, contact area to try and win the, the scrum it's came back on a hoik side 
as the Glasgow Hawks players disperse from the situation but Ford again just putting the pivot in this is where Andrew Mitchell likes to play rugby he likes broken field play he's got some players on the inside but he wants to go direct he's pumping the legs he's over the line can he get the ball down the referee's got a good position there looking to try and see if he's got the ball over but not on this occasion the centre's held up but that is what Andrew Mitchell can do when he gets the space he can bounce his players off but he's got that but Kirk Ford is the man that started that Kirk Ford was the orchestrator there uh, but Andrew Mitchell he burst into life in this game there and I don't know how many challenges he sort of pinballed off that was a Herculean effort from Mitchell there and uh, oh, what a try that would have been and it's it, it, you know sad to see he's been held up on that occasion because he, he deserved something from that that was massive out of this team if you, if, if you can get behind the game line like what Ford can do if you can get that free hand and you get Mitchell in behind he is a dangerous dangerous player because not only is he quick but he's strong but he's got a relatively good rugby brain as well but it shows if you can get in behind the defensive line this Hawks defence can be unlocked and the players like the Ford and Mitchell are the players to do it as Matty Carrier has returned to the field of play and it's been kicked down the throat of uh, Sutherland there and Sutherland looking to just go straight and direct as he's uh, made some good yards there and Ford now looking to just put the boot to ball it's a good kick there and it's uh, been again it's been well fielded there by Joy he did bobble underneath his body but it uh, came back on a Hawks side but again good intelligent play there from Kirk Ford and in a game where the backs haven't really got ticking he's looked very impressive for Hoyk this afternoon and Glasgow Hawks finding uh, brims again in the pocket looking not to kick out and uh, Kyle Brunton just keeping that in the field of play and now looking to try and put boot to ball and then chipping it into space and that's uh, a great bit of space there that he's found and if Kyle Brunton can put the burners on he can put them under a bit of pressure here because Burgess is the player who was kicking and I think Kyle Brunton certainly made himself known to the, the replacement scrum half that he was there but that's a great exit kick from the, the replacement scrum half Burgess Hawks have you know, they've, they've controlled the game, you know, and, and maybe not all aspects, but almost every aspect of the game. They've controlled where the game's been played, what pace it's been played at, and where Hoyk have, you know, they've pretty much told them where they want them to attack. And from a Glasgow Hawks point of view, they've, they certainly look like they can mount a challenge for this top four. The defence has been absolutely outstanding. Uh, the front rows went well, Halafi, who we've mentioned, but Jack McLean and Mark Namara have all been big players today. And that's a turnover at the scrum, and that is a... A monumental effort in the front row in the scrum there for Hawks and you can see the ball just getting launched there by McNamara at number 8 but it was against the head as well and Glasgow Hawks just putting the pressure on to this Hoyt pack marching them back and perhaps, you know, during the week that they did, uh, there was an article with Matty Carrier speaking about the, the youthfulness of this squad and how young this squad is and perhaps this is a big, big lesson for them in their journey in terms of their rugby career because they're being bullied here, bullied up front and they're not being allowed to play in the backs and these pockets of youthful players are certainly being taken to school this afternoon. So I think maybe this is an opportunity for Hawks to go for this bonus point, get the four tries and get the five points of this game which would be a huge, huge tilt for this top four for them but it's the captain Cairn Cross to throw in to the line out. He's got options there, he's got Halafihi, they don't lift up and they just go direct and it's now Cairn Cross and Hoyk having to work hard to try and defend this but it's got a, a good bit of go forward there in the mall and Burgess now having to dig about there and he's found McLean, McLean burrowing his way through the Hoyk defence and Burgess just issuing the orders, telling the players to come round and Rogers now has uh, worked hard to get round from the initial line out and now Strain looking to try and add to his tally of one try already this afternoon. He got the opening score and Glasgow Hawks looking to try and get that bonus point try. But you will see there's a, a big defensive effort there. Cairn Cross, the captain, he's not able to go over the whitewash on that occasion. Andrew Mitchell was one of the big bodies there who was in the road of the uh, Glasgow Hawks captain on his surge to the line. But the Hawks team and Hawks do get that bonus point try. It's Jack McLean, the second row, who's got the bonus point try here this afternoon. And you've got to say that's perhaps the game gone there. And a good day's work for Glasgow Hawks. Brims is going to have the chance here to just nudge this ball over and keep his kicking percentage at 100 this afternoon. And it's another conversion there. 31 points to 10. They do say that wins are built off of good defence. Certainly this is a... A monumental effort from Glasgow Hawks, 31 points to 10. They currently lead. And Burgess 
has put the ball into the strum and again a relatively comfortable strum from Glasgow Hawks as they pass the ball out there to McGrory. McGrory just fends off Kyle Brunt and there's a lot of de- there's a lot of support over this far side and just trying to go through the repertoire of skills there. It was probably easier to pass for McGrory, but he kicked the ball from their own 22. And it's now four just throwing that dummy does eat the two defenders up and Ronan McKean now just charging up the tram lines. He looks like he's been taken into the touch from Halafi. Again, defensively, great work from the second row. Just uh, stopping McKean making any sort of momentum in that run. Just getting his feet into touch. And that was almost an opportunity to break the shackles and let loose for Hoyk. They did, but again, defensively, Halafihi was there. Halafihi, where did he where did he come from? He done enough to put his man into touch, and that's just about summed his game up today. He's been absolutely outstanding. Like I said before, you'd you'd follow him all day long. He, he sets a lead in defence, uh, and he's been it, it, it's been a joy to see his defensive performance this afternoon. I think it was certainly built off a. Of, a big effort from the front row in the opening 10 minutes for Glasgow Hawks but from that I think most players have, have played really really well for this Glasgow Hawks team Brims who's uh, just knocked on there from the line out is, is one of them McGrory has uh, showed his experience and influence over an outside centre but the, I think most of the forwards specifically the back row as well you know they've put in a power of work McNamara has been very very industrious in his work in the back row getting across the field and to a man they've probably outplayed Hoyk which is just testament to, to, to Glasgow Hawks but also it's, uh, it's a, a lot of work to do for, for Hoyk in terms of making sure that they can cement their place in the top four in the Premiership but they've got the chance to try and strike from, from the scrum here Oh yeah, Hoyk, Hoyk will be back. Like I say, it's 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 one of those days. It's a it's not their best day at the office this season. They've been they've had a great season. You know, uh, several outstanding performers, and they will be back. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the, the, you know, the winter months, the winter games at Mansfield Park. Nobody will fancy going there. No, it's always a difficult place. I still got a hundred percent home record at Mansfield Park. It was on the road that they found it very tricky, and that was where they. Uh, they'd lost their three games and they can probably chalk it up as number four now as Lightfoot has just knocked on and the balls came back on it Glasgow Hawks side has went back to Hoyk but the referee is going to blow full time that is the last play of this game here at Lock Inch and it is Glasgow Hawks in relatively unfamiliar surroundings get their seventh win of the season and put a little bit of pressure on Edinburgh Ackies in the fourth position in the top four it's still all to play for here Hoyk not really at the races in the second half they only added the penalty from Kirk Ford to add to the try from Stuart Graham and the earlier conversion from Kirk Ford but tries from Paul Cairncross, Gary Strain Ali Rogers and the last one from Jack McLean plus uh, four conversions and a penalty from the boot of Liam Brims means that Glasgow Hawks win here 31 points to 10 and they keep their ambitions of getting in that top four alive with a, a win against a very informed Hoik team Yeah, it, it just looked today that the breaks not worked in Hoik's favour Hoik are a good team, they're a good team with good players they're well coached and they will be back there's no doubt about that So Glasgow Hawks move up to 37 points in the league uh, Edinburgh Ackies, they're on 43 Hoik maybe a little bit more comfortable on 47 but they leave Lock Inch here this afternoon with no points it's Glasgow Hawks who get 5 points because they've defeated Hoyk in the Tenants Premiership it's Glasgow Hawks 31 Hoyk 10 credit to Hoyt came down gave us a very good game uh, I think the boys walked in well for straight after um, Christmas break it's always tough to come back glad it's on this surface as well we trained here um, and it was a really good game hopefully you can uh, spectators enjoyed it as well yeah and you went in at half time having played into the wind in the first half and ahead on the scoreboard what what was the viewpoint in the sheds at half time? I think just playing the game tactically from then on uh, I think physically uh, we were very very dominant um, and if, if we can play in the right areas of the pitch then uh, we can increase the scoreboard Glasgow were right up for it I think we, they caught us sleeping a wee bit early doors I think once the announcement came in uh, during the week that games could be cancelled they were straight on the phone saying we're keen to play so I think they've done their homework and I think they just caught us sleeping the day like the more consistent we are, the more we back ourselves and, and get a bit of confidence in us. Um, I think the more we can push for the top four spot. I think uh, there's like a six point gap between us and Aki's. We're really, really going to try and push. Um, I think we're away next week to Curry, so another big, big game for us. 
do you think from a rugby perspective other clubs will look at what happened today and feel confident to maybe pull on the boots next week? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think, I'd, I'm not sure how many games in Scotland there were, but there weren't a lot. And uh, I know as soon as we got the message to say, do you want to play, every single boy was like, yep, exactly, we want to play, we want to go out, we want to show ourselves. Um, and boys have been working super, super hard over Christmas as well. We kind of made it a, a point to say, everyone get in the WhatsApp, everyone get in your fitness, get in everything. And it, it clearly shows. So credit to all the boys. Um, and again, credit to Ike for coming out, giving us a really good game.